again take your time dozens of people are going to be watching this that many today we'll be testing shotgun slugs made out of the non-toxic metal bismuth Bismuth has a relatively low melting point, even lower than the melting point of lead. So rather than machining this metal into the shape of a slug, you should be able to cast it like a lead slug. But unlike lead, bismuth actually expands when it solidifies from a liquid to a solid. Lead shrinks. Despite these differences, Ed McGar was able to cast these beautiful 12 gauge slugs and maintain the proper diameter and specs for a 12 gauge slug that'll be traveling down a rifled barrel. By using an alloy of bismuth, antimony, and tin, the unusual expansion of bismuth was kept in check, so Ed didn't need a specially sized mold just to cast these bismuth slugs. The weight of these projectiles is pretty impressive, over one and a half ounces, and today we'll be driving them at a velocity of around 1450 feet per second. Bismuth is considerably harder and more brittle than lead, and we'll demonstrate this by using a variety of different targets to blast these things into. It's heavy. Yeah. We're, we're going to try to get some different targets, find out if it's going to shatter, if it's going to hold together. Yeah, I don't, it, it seems like a pretty hard metal and I think it may, it may be brittle or it may be malleable, I don't know. Well, that's what we're here to find out. Yeah. Science. But it's a heavy, I hope you got your, uh, your, uh, you took your shoulder medicine, your Dones, <laughs> Dones yeah, pills. My, my limb saver pills. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's uh, see what these are going to do. I'm curious. I am too. For the first test, we're going to be shooting at the aluminum plate using a rifle choke. See if that gives these things enough spin. Aiming at the little blue cross on there. Got the plate at a little bit of angle so nothing comes back at us. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Using the rifle choke, we were able to obtain a very light spin clockwise. It was enough to stabilize the slug though. And when the slug hit the aluminum plate, it just disintegrated. This first test gives us a pretty good idea of just how brittle this bismuth alloy is. But how will it react to softer targets, like a lead plate? If we can get a chrono reading this time. Okay, I'm, I'm predicting 1,450 feet per second. Using full rifling, we were able to attain much better spin. Danny was using a point of aim they would use for a foster slug. So even at 10 yards, you can see the difference in ballistics between a one ounce slug and a one and a half ounce slug. And I mention that because a lot of people have this idea that you can use the same point of aim for every type of slug and get the same results. And that's just not the case. Okay, you've sighted that shotgun and using foster slugs, right? One right. Ounce. So you got little different ballistics going on with these. Yeah, it was uh, dead on at 50 yards. Right, I saw that. So what happened there? Well, it, it, it shot it, low, again, right? Again, it shot low. We got little pieces laying all over, but when we walked up on it here, we got a cavity full of, I'm assuming, slug. Yeah, look at that. That's an interesting material. The shininess. Oh, oh. Wow. <clears throat> what do we call that? A bulge. No, that's spalling. Ah. That is your classic spalling right there. A lot of people, especially the, the armor people, have completely screwed up the definition of spalling. The tank people that are into tanks know what spalling is, though. That's where you get breakage from the back of your target, that's even what, though you uh, didn't get penetration. That's what flies around inside your cabin, tank cabin. Exactly. Is that what they call it? A, a, a cabin? I, I don't know, but it sounds good. It sounds good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Started out about three and a half inches thick. It swelled up like a, I don't know, bloated goat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it ends up at, just curiosity. 
Six inches, so it doubled in size. Yeah, just or more or less, more or less. Yeah. A little less and more. <laughs> we got a Kevlar behind it in case it goes through, but I, my prediction is it's it's not going to go through. I think it's going to disintegrate inside there. And the way that thing's been shooting low, I'm going to hold my point aim at the top of the circle. Okay. See if that should can, be about right. See if we can get her in the middle. Yep. Look at the rook. I was close. Look at that. 1459. Danny made a small adjustment in his point of aim and it looks like he's on target now. The slug had enough energy to pass all the way through the wet magazines, yet the magazines hardly moved at all. In case you're not familiar with the wet magazine test, this medium will stop a one ounce foster slug traveling at a much higher velocity, up to 1600 feet per second but our heavy bismuth slug had enough energy to pass all the way through the magazines, strike the Kevlar panel, and carry that quite a distance. I predicted this slug would shatter completely inside the wet magazines and dissipate all of its energy in there and not pass all the way through. Evidently it did disintegrate some. Okay, so I'm we found, right. we found one piece downrange. It kicked this Kevlar panel. Oh. Probably a good 20 feet out there. Yeah. And we found one piece. Look at that. You can see the crystalline structure in there. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Let's see if the if Danny has figured out the point of impact on these yet, which I think he has. I'm ready whenever you are. All right. How's the shoulder? Doing good. Okay. Got to ask. Okay. I'm ready anytime. That went flying. Well, the bismuth slug managed to go through our wet magazines pretty easily, but the bowling pin was a lot more of a challenge. The slug entered the bowling pin, shattered inside there, and all of its energy went into the bowling pin and threw it quite a distance. It's rather difficult to pass through a bowling pin with a large diameter, relatively low velocity projectile, but we did it with this custom Russian made slug. Using Danny's space pin, we can gauge how deep the cavity is to the back of the slug, and it's about two and a half inches. Bowling pins are built to be tough, but do you know what kind of wood they use to make bowling pins out of? Simulate what would happen if you were hit by one of these while wearing a Kevlar vest. Aiming at the blue piece of tape on there? That's uh... We're going to try for it. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, I'm ready. All right. 1443. A Kevlar body panel such as this, which is a level 3A, will normally stop, let's say, a one ounce foster slug even at a higher velocity. The bismuth slug, on the other hand, being harder and more brittle, managed to penetrate the vest. It did shatter as it passed through causing fragments to blow out the back of the dummy. You figured out where to aim those things finally. <laughs> so you got a look at that, right? Yeah, that's pretty good there. Cut right through like there. Like a paper cutter. Right through here. And that's, you know Danny's good when he hits the tape that's on the shirt, too. <laughs> Full pass-through on that Kevlar, and that was uh, not a compromised area. That was Yeah, that was a clean area. Clean area. Got 4 came in. And then it exited. Uh, a lot of people are upset about this $3 shirt. Um, it's, a, it's really, it was literally a $3 shirt. No, $2.97. So, yeah, I don't think the vest would have helped you. No. Even got a headshot on Kramer there. Now, shotgun slugs, no matter what we say, are not very accurate. They're, they're, they really aren't that accurate, not like a rifle round. But I think Danny can hit that ball 10 yards away. It's about three inches in diameter, maybe? I think three, yeah. It's like a croquet ball. 
If he can hit that, that'll demonstrate the accuracy of these accurate slugs made out of bismuth, a bismuth alloy, I should say. Look at that thing go. In this test, we wanted to show off the accuracy of not just Danny, but also the accuracy of the slug. After five previous tests, Danny's point of aim is now a couple inches above the target. The slug managed to pass all the way through the croquet ball, which I think is made out of a hard rubber or hard plastic. The slug did shatter as it passed through. So far all our tests were only done at 10 yards. Let's see how these things do at 50 yards, or around 45 meters. On a side note, I'm pretty impressed with the accuracy of these slugs. It was the wind. It was the wind. On the croquet ball, you probably noticed it shot a little bit to the left. Well, that's compounded at 50 yards. So he missed by maybe two and a half inches there. I think he got it. On Danny's second attempt, he got a little bit better, but still shooting a little bit to the left. He'll have to compensate a little bit more. Got it. Got it. On Danny's third try, it looks like he figured it out. Pretty darn close. A little bit to the left still, but that's pretty good. Very consistent slug and excellent results. Full pass through. Okay. But look at that. Look at that. You can... That's pretty good for just a beats uh, or uh, red dot. Red dot and having to compensate for the drop because I didn't make any adjustments except for my point of aim. Okay. Where were you aiming on that one? Right at the water level. Oh, okay. Just about here, I guess it was. So. Very good. Very good. Uh, Dang it. I'll blame that on Kentucky windage. Oh. Oh, Calif man, there's nothing to blame there, man. California windage, I'd have missed the jug. These are these are excellent slugs. Whoever makes those accurate molds, man, you got to be proud of yourself. And Ed for casting them. Yeah, you did a good job of casting them. Beautiful job, yeah. Okay, what else we got? Gel. Ballistic gel. Yep. That's right. Thank you. Okay, ballistic gel. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, do it. Whoa. And there you have it, the Ballistic Jelly. That is one devastating slug. Let's watch it again. If you need a slug that behaves like a hand grenade inside its target, this might be the right material for you. Today we've tested the Bismuth slug on a variety of different targets, and it definitely exhibited very different properties than a Lud slug or any other metal slug. When the Bismuth slug impacted the Ballistic Gel, it broke into many fragments. Some of the fragments were large and passed all the way through the gel. Some of the fragments were very small and only penetrated about four inches of the gel. But in this 16 inch block of gel, there really wasn't any area of the gel that wasn't damaged seriously by this projectile. This is actually very unique to this slug as we've never seen this kind of devastation before. Here at a different angle, you can see the cone of destruction there as illustrated with my fingers. And finally, Danny is digging out a, a medium-sized piece that was near the end of the gel. And that concludes the testing of the bismuth alloy slugs. Please like the video if you appreciate the effort. It's kind of like tipping, but it doesn't cost you anything. Or thumb it down if that makes you feel important. Thanks for watching.